Wouldn't it be great to quickly change and repitch incoming MIDI notes from MIDI controllers, for example, from MIDI drum controllers in Ableton Live? Hi, I'm Toby from ableton.com. I created a few Max for Live devices, especially for this use case, which makes it easy to repitch incoming MIDI notes from MIDI controllers, for example, to play presets and Ableton Live quick and easy. Those are Max for Live devices and you will need Max for Live, which is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. Okay, so let's have a look here. So for example, if you pull in a drum rack preset here, those different samples are applied to different MIDI note pitches and those are following the general MIDI standard Usually not all of those are and sometimes stuff gets a little messy. So you quickly want to be able to change MIDI note pitches instead of um, changing all the different MIDI note pitches inside a drum rig. So let me um, explain what I mean. So for example, if we open up the chain view and the in and out section in a drum rig, we can see that the kick is listening to a C1. So that's like a pretty uh, standardized um, general MIDI thingy and the C1 usually is playing the kick. There are sometimes um, some mappings here because um, the general MIDI standard from an E drum kit is a little bit different if you go higher and higher and you have more notes than only 16 notes in here, like 16 samples we got in here. So this is one use case example. Of course, this can be used to play melodies and scales as well. So how can we quickly repitch MIDI here? So for example, if I play my Nona pad here, which is playing a few of those standardized uh, MIDI note pitches per default, but maybe the first pad, I want to change this pitch here to play a different sample generally um, of my drum rack presets. Okay, so what do I need to do? I could change everything in here, but that would only change the MIDI pitch inside this particular drum rack preset. And I'm actually, um, let's say I always want this pad, the pad um, on the bottom left here to play the snare sound, for example. So the snare usually sits on D1 in most uh, drum racks and in most um, standardized general MIDI um, drum modules here. So I actually need to repitch this pad here to play a D1 instead of a C1. And that's where I'm, my MIDI note tuner is coming into place. So I will introduce you to version two here first. And then afterwards I show you version three, which has some more functionalities. So, but let's start with the basics with version two. Those Max for Life devices are available on my homepage, abletondrama.com, or there is a direct link in the video description here. Okay, so if we turn that on, we get a MIDI in and MIDI out monitor. So we can see a MIDI C1 is coming in and a MIDI C1 is coming out. So now if I want to repitch that, I quickly want to detect the MIDI note I'm sending in and um, this device is doing this automatically. So I select number one, so the first row here, to be repitched. So now it's listening to the incoming MIDI note. Bam, and it's automatically detecting I'm sending in a C1 and now I can set whatever note I want to play and to send out. And you can hear this is playing all those different notes here and I need a note off for doing the note offs when I pitch those. So the C1 will now play the kick. And if I repitch this to D1, and I can do this via just selecting different um, things in here, so I can actually type in stuff here. I could use my arrows to go up and down, and I could use my mouse, click on it, and drag stuff up and down. So let's get back to D1. So now my pad is sending in a C1, but it's sending out a D1. And this will trigger this um, particular slot in the drum rack here, which is a snare drum. So 
This is all there is actually, and I can do that quickly with other fields as well. So let's maybe let's select um, slot three here and use the third pad um, on the bottom right here. I hit that pad, it is detecting what uh, MIDI note pitch I'm sending in. If I want to turn this off, I can just drag this all the way down, click drag this all the way down, or I could put in a zero. So let's quickly repatch that, select the slot here, put in a zero, enter, and it's off as well. Okay, so now let's quickly do that uh, again. Maybe let's do patch number two. And this is sending out a C1 now, and same works here as well. I could um, select a different MIDI note pitch and look for, for example, for a tom here. Okay, so now those notes are being repitched. If I only want to, oh, let's put this different. So if I'm now playing my pad, all those different notes are going through. If I want all other notes which I haven't repitched here to be blocked, I can just select the blocked button here and now only the pads and only the note pitches which I repitched inside the device are going through. So the cool thing here now is I can have this set up for my MIDI uh, drum controller or for my uh, electronic drum kit for my um, MIDI 4x4 pad or whatever, whatever um, MIDI controller is sending MIDI notes here. And I could save and store this as a um, preset. So I could just drag and drop this into my user library and call this uh, preset X. So now every time I quickly want to cycle through and listen to certain presets, um, factory presets or third party presets um, in Ableton Live. I quickly gen just can drag this in front of my drum rack and all the MIDI note pitches are being recalled. Okay, so you can do this with up to 24 notes. Here you get a MIDI monitor. I mentioned that already. So. Now let's have a look into version three because version three is a little bit advanced here. So for example, if you wanna change during a song or during an Ableton Live set, you might want to be able to change different uh, to different MIDI, triggering different MIDI note pitches. Maybe if you, if you go tonal here or um, playing different scales or if you wanna play different sounds, you can automate different MIDI note pitches in version three here so this should actually not be called version 2.1 this should be called version 3 <laughs> let's quickly redo that so you don't get confused okay so it looks a little bit different so the select number and slot to repitch field is on the right and the midi monitor and the non-selected notes through is on the right side so let us quickly um, detect a few notes and repitch a few notes here. So let's say uh, field number one should play. Let's have a listen. The Hyatt open. And let's say the number two should play a Hyatt closed. Let's look for the Hyatt closed, uh, which is on. Here, or we can look inside the Ableton drum rack as well. It's an F sharp one. So let's quickly set this to F sharp one. Okay, so. So now I have those two pads being repitched and I can now give this a name. Let's call this maybe Hyatt and store this. So I just need to click on store here now and I can select a different um, preset via this menu here. So I select number two and you can see nothing is being stored in here. So um, maybe let's do some toms. So get the first one. Let's have a look what the toms are. So let's take this tom here, which is an A1. I go to the pitch out field, put in A1. I go to the second slot here and maybe do the second tom here, which is a B1. 
by the way don't get confused um, you got um, if you turn stuff on you have this minus sign here in front of so minus means the lowest so if we have a look in the drum rack here let's get rid of the playing notes so at the bottom the lowest note here is a C minus 2 and then it goes up to C minus 1 then it goes to C 0 if we go up here um, on the slider on the left side and then we arrive at the octave here which is the C1 okay so now we have those different uh, things stored in here and I can uh, just get rid of some tunings I don't want to if I drag if I click and drag my my mouse all the way down or I can put in a zero while this field is selected here and those repitching tunings are turned off okay so now let's rename this to toms and it's asking me if I want to store that stored so every time I change something in here just to show you um, a stored question mark question mark question mark is um, turning up to ask you like hey you changed something do you want to store this or do you don't want to store this so if I want to store this I press on store if I don't I just don't okay so now I have those different tunings um, in here as presets so I can select one or two so if number one is selected my pets are playing a Hyatt or Hyatt sounds if I select number two two here I get those tom sounds okay so obviously I can change those um, sounds in here via automations as well so this is the advantage of version 3 um, they come bundled so you get version 2 and version 3 and you can decide which one you want to use so version 3 lets you set automation so if you go into your uh, arrangement view you turn on the automation view here and you need to select midi note tuner and the preset selection and now you can create breakpoints on this line by clicking on this line and then you have a breakpoint and you can then just apply this to a different um, preset which should be selected here so now if this is playing for example I play my Hyatt sounds and as soon as I go over this breakpoint here let's fast forward this a little it will change automatically and you can see that in the device itself to toms obviously you can do this in session view as well so if you play live in session view or if you program or um, produce in session view you can do this in via a um, dummy clip so i create a dummy clip here by just clicking on an empty clip slot double clicking actually and then i go to the envelope section i need to select the device midi note tuner version 3 um, preset selection and now i get this um, automation envelope here and i can set breakpoints by clicking on the red line and then i can hold this breakpoint going up and down to select a different um, preset which is being automated or the change is being automated here so now number one is selected now number two and we can see this here it's changing from number one to number two and it's changing really quick here because um, the automation is only one bar and only half a bar okay those are max for life devices which help you to do the repitching in this way obviously repitching can be done in a lot of different ways so some controllers do have the ability to store different pitching inside the drum controller so as appealing as this might sound, um, I really like that I only have one tuning on my um, drum controller, on my MIDI drum controller, um, and then being able to have the stuff in my sets, have the, the certain MIDI note pitches I'm actually using in my set. Because when I recall stuff um, like two years later, I'm sure that it's still on the same pitching and I don't need to go back into my uh, drum controller and change midi note pitches there or think about oh what did i use 
it's all set there. And especially some MIDI controllers, some drum controllers, some more advanced controllers like the Nonapad, for example. Yes, you can have different MIDI node numbers in there, but the whole changing of stuff and the whole logic behind that the editors, if there is an editor which is uh, appealing at all, sometimes it isn't or only work on Windows, um, they... Oh, all those editors have a, a different logic on like how to save stuff, record stuff, where to save stuff, etc. So this way, and even especially when I have to replace a unit quickly for a gig or something, I just need one note pitch preset on the controller itself and then have everything changing in Ableton Live in my set I'm using there anyways. Okay, cool. So once more, Max for Live devices, you will need Max for Live for making use of that. Um, follow the links in the video description or head over to abletondrama.com to find those devices there. You can do, put in a search bar because I have released so many devices already so that um, you might need to perform a search on my abletondrama.com homepage to get to those devices cool um have fun drumming and i hope this is a technique which is interesting um for a lot of you peeps out there just quickly save and recall presets and don't worry too much about pitching just once create a preset name it for your controller done nice one take care bye bye